mark of pagan praying? Well, number one, they pray to no gods. N-O dash little g O D S no gods. They were praying to false gods, to idols. Folks, there is one true and living God. He is the Lord. His only begotten Son is Jesus Christ. We approach that God through His only begotten Son. They were approaching these no gods, and they had a method of praying. Jesus highlights that he speaks about, he says, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. They would use um, how we would think about it today. They would use incantations. They would use spells. They would use these set prayers, and they viewed it as a, a magical formula, if you will. They thought if they used those precise words, these elaborate, eloquent incantation and words that the better that it was, the better that it sounded, that they would gain the God's favor and that they would hear them. The idea is that they have to do something to merit a hearing. They've really got to show out in prayer. They've got to do a good job with it. They've got to get the wording exactly right or God's not going to hear them. So they would do these elaborate set prayers, these incantations, these spells, if you will, in order to be heard. And what would happen a lot of times is they would be saying it with their mouths and their minds wouldn't even be thinking it. Just da 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 just speaking stuff. Speaking these incantations with their lips, with their minds not being engaged. And Jesus condemns us. Of course, he, he's condemning praying to a no God. He, he wants us to pray to the Father through him. But what he's wanting us to do is being very intentional with what we say. He wants our mind and our heart engaged in prayer as well as our lips. A great New Testament uh, commentator, John Stott, if you ever see a book by John Stott, buy it. It will be good. If you don't like it, give it to me. He's a great New Testament scholar. Here's what he said, commenting on this verse. He's got a great commentary on the Sermon on the Mount, by the way. He said, Jesus is describing any and every prayer that is all words and no meaning, all lips and no mind or heart. What Jesus forbids is any kind of prayer with the mouth when the mind is not engaged. A lot of us are guilty of that, aren't we? We've got the mouth engaged, but the mind's not. You know, I think probably one of the times that we're the most guilty of that is when we say the blessing before food. We give thanks for the food, don't we? We just... Come on now. You know it's true. We will zip through that thing not even think what we're saying. We just want to eat the fried chicken. And it's wrong. It's wrong. Well, what's some warning against mindless prayers? What's some application that we can make? Well, number one, this is a warning against what I would call mindless set prayers. We have to be careful that we don't take some kind of, of written prayer or formula and just say it verbatim without thinking about it. Some branches of Christendom do that. Some even go so far as to take the prayer that we're going to be studying beginning next Sunday, the Lord's Prayer. Some branches of Christendom, they will take that prayer and they will just recite it mindlessly with no meaning, with no mind or heart engagement and say that that's their prayer. No, it's not. I find it interesting that they do that using Jesus' very words in a passage right after he condemns that practice. The Lord wants us to engage, not just our mouth, but our minds and our heart. Another way, we're not just going to pick on one and not ourselves. We will get into habits, and, and I, I'm, I'm bad about this, and we are too. We have a prayer vocabulary. We have phrases that we like to say, don't we? You know we do. We have certain phrases that we like to say, certain titles from God, and that's wonderful. That's wonderful. But we have to be careful that we don't use them so much that when we get into our prayer time that we're not thinking about what we're saying. We do it, don't we? Be very, very careful 
that, that you be intentional with your words as you pray to God. Not just saying some stuff, but thinking. Engage in your mind and your heart as you approach the Lord. And then number two, something that I've already hit on, but I think it's needed. This is a warning against mindless, rushed prayers. Remember, I, I said that we live in a very anti-prayer culture. It's because we're so busy. We don't want to make the time. We're, we're rushing from one thing to another to another, and we treat prayer, we treat our devotional life like a holy checklist. I've got X amount of time. I've got to get through it because i, I got to go do X, Y, and Z, and so we blow through our prayer time. And it's mindless, and it's rushed, and when we do that, it's just vain repetition. Vain repetition. Jesus is interested in the quality of our words, not the quantity. Jesus is interested in the quality of the time that we spend in prayer, not the quantity. So to come back and to sum everything up, what do we need to take away from this? You and I are to be people of prayer. That's the bottom line. We have been given access to the Father through Jesus. We need to plug in. We need to pray. We need to pray with God as our audience. We need to date God in prayer, so to speak. We need a place and a time that we set every day. And we need to be very, very intentional to engage our mind and our hearts and not just empty words. When we pray, we're plugging into our power source. When we fail to pray, we are weak. We are shallow in our spiritual life. We open ourselves up to temptation and to defeat. So we need to make a commitment to prayer. This morning, I'll ask this again, as I did in the introduction during our scripture reading. Maybe today, you recognize I don't have prayer life. The last time I prayed, I can't remember. Or maybe you realize today that you've got a foxhole prayer life. You only pray in crises. You only pray in times of trouble. And then once that subsides, you go back to ignoring God. Both of those are wrong. What God desires of us, what Jesus has died to give us, is access to the Father Boldness, assured access to the Father, to the throne of grace, and we need to be doing that consistently on a daily basis. If it takes missing a phone call, miss a phone call. Those folks will call back. If it takes missing a TV show, miss a TV show. It probably ain't worth, wasn't worth anything to start with. Make it a point to be much in prayer. If the Holy Spirit of God is convicting you over that, we're going to have a time of decision. Brother Terry's going to come lead us. Miss Debbie is going to play. The altar.